Okay, let's get this meal prep video started. So I'm gonna be showing you guys what I make on a weekly basis as part of my meal prep. So it might help someone out. If you're like me, you're working on the go, you're in the van, you're going from job to job, or you might be a tradesperson, you might just be someone who's working on the move, does a lot of traveling for work as well. So this sort of video, it might just help you plan your meals a little bit better, might save you some money, might improve your health and your lifestyle a little bit. Like I said, I'm not qualified a nutritionist or anything like that. I have a keen interest in sort of fitness and nutrition and stuff like that, but I haven't got any qualifications. I did compete in men's physique back in 2015. So I have gone through like a vigorous diet program and all that stuff. So this is like what I've gained and picked up bits and pieces as I've gotten, as I've gone through my training and experience and stuff. And yeah, it's just basically going to be a video of, I'm going to show you what I make. This is going to be like a simple curry that I make, all pretty much natural ingredients. And it lasts me the whole week and I'll just portion it out week by week. So I've got how many, six onions here, but you can literally, it depends on how you want your food to be flavored. I'm going to be making two kilos of chicken. So I'm going to be doing, I normally try and do, I was doing chicken breast before, but I've switched over to chicken thighs, but they didn't have any chicken thighs left at the butchers this weekend. So I bought whole chicken legs. So I've got two kilos of chicken legs, which I'm going to cut into thighs and drumsticks and then make it into a curry. So first things first, just going to prep everything that I need for the base. So got my onions, got my chilies, got my garlic, got my ginger. I'm not going to go into detail about the quantities of everything that I use. I'll give you a rough guide of how I make it in depending on the amount that I'm making, but it's going to vary depending on how much you're going to be looking to make for the week as well. So yeah, let me get all this prep first and then we'll crack on with the next part. Right, all the ingredients for the base have been prepped. This usually takes the longest for me because, yeah, it's just long. If you haven't, got, you get yourself one of these electric choppers. It just makes your life a lot more easier. I used to chop everything by hand when I first started meal prepping and it just used to take even longer. Um, so I've got myself an electric chopper. It just speeds things up. So I've got two kilos of chicken here. Like I said, these are whole legs which I've chopped up into thighs and drumsticks. So that's what I'm going to be basically, that's going to be my meal prep for the week. I've made larger quantities of ingredients because I'm going to be using the same base for my dinner tonight. So I'm making lamb chops, but I'm going to tell you what I, how much I normally use on a weekly basis for my meal prep. So normally on a standard week, I'll have four to five decent sized onions, six green chilies, one whole bulb of garlic and a good sized knuckle of ginger. Obviously, I like my food fairly spicy, so you may not want to put that many chilies in. So you can adjust the spices. You can adjust everything to your taste, but this is based on approximately two kilos of chicken. Tomatoes as well. I've started using fresh tomatoes. So on the vine tomatoes, I think there's about five tomatoes in there. I used to use passata or the tin chopped tomatoes, but I'm trying to use as much raw ingredients as possible rather than pre-prepared ingredients. Obviously, you can't get away with it completely but i'm trying to minimize it where i can and just try and use fresh ingredients wherever i can so now i've got the uh, ingredients for the base prepared let's get over to the pan so i cook do all my cooking with ghee so this is basically derived from butter now this is obviously a pre-made one but my mom actually makes this herself at home so once this tin is finished she's i'm just going to go to her and she's just going to sort me out a whole load of ghee. And I've also got, this is my spice box. So this has got all loads of different Indian spices in it as well. The main ones I'll be using today is gonna to be the cumin seeds, turmeric, and this is crushed coriander and cumin seeds as well. So it's just to add a little bit of flavor and there's another spice mix that I'll show you that I'm gonna be using, which is probably gonna be really handy for anyone who's not familiar with like making curries and stuff it just it will be really handy because you don't have to worry about getting all different spices it's basically spice blend packets and all it's got is raw ingredients in it and you can just add that to any curry and it will basically make it taste really good depending on how much you use and stuff like that so first things first let's get some ghee in the pan let's get that hot and then let's start adding some ingredients in right apologies i've got the extractor hood running but that ghee is nice and hot now so we're just going to add in all the ingredients so i'm going to start by, let's just bring this over here. So I'm gonna add 
two decent sized spoons of cumin seeds. Maybe a little bit more because like I said, I'm making slightly more because I'm making lamb chops as well. Ah, let's chuck in a little bit more. Right, cumin seeds, some cinnamon sticks, some bay leaves, and cardamom pods. Again, I tend to do a lot of freestyling, so a lot of my curries that I make, they sometimes come out really good, and then I kick myself because I can't remember what I put in them, but I need to just get that in there, so I'll come back to this in a minute. Right, I've got the onions in and just gonna let them cook until they become soft. Added a bit of salt as well to, to taste. So yeah, I've got the cumin seeds, cinnamon sticks, bay leaves, cardamom pods, and now the onions. So just gonna let this all wait until the onions go nice and soft and a little bit brown. And then we'll add in the ginger, chili, and garlic mix. Let that all cook. And then the crushed tomatoes, and then other spices and stuff. So yeah, I'll show you as I go along. All right, that's the chili, garlic, ginger added in. Now this, you only need to really let it cook for a few minutes because it will cook really quickly. That's until, once, as you start doing it more and more, you get used to the smell of raw ingredients. And once that raw smell burns off, not burns off, but cooks off, you'll know that that's cooked and then in a minute we'll add in the chopped tomatoes as well but that ooh. oh that's strong like i said i like mine curries with a lot of flavor a lot of spice but you can adjust it to however you like it as well so i'm gonna let this cook for a couple of minutes and then i'm gonna add the tomatoes in as well Right, tomatoes are in. I'm now gonna start adding in some of the spices. So a nice, healthy heap of turmeric, a nice heap of the coriander and cumin seed powder. That's in there. I normally would add a bit of red chili powder, but I've already got green chilies in there. Uh, so if I need any more spice, I'll add some. And then this, is a spice mix I'm gonna be using on this one. But I've got quite a few of these. I've got tandoori barbecue masala, got butter chicken masala. So you can get a lot of these from like your local Indian cash and carry or whatever. And even the ingredients in the back of this, it's there's no sort of uh, preservatives or emulsifiers or anything like that. It's literally just raw spices um, that's been ground together. Some of them, they may have a little bit like this one, it's called Kitchen King. So this one, no, nah, again, all raw ingredients just been ground together. So if you really want to be certain about what's going in there, you can have a look at the ingredients. But a lot of these spice mixes, although they're ready mixed spice mixes, they are just raw ingredients. This is my favorite one. So I'm just going to add a load of this in. Again, freestyling, I'm not measuring how much is left in there because I'm like I said I'm doing lamb chops as well so you know what it's not by the time I mix it all in there's not that much left so yeah that's that one done so now I'll just let that all mix in together let that cook for a while and then I'll add in the meat I'm gonna actually separate out some of this and then put it into another pot so I can cook the lamb chops in and then the remainder will We'll just chuck the chicken in and then let that all cook. So that's the base ready. So now to this, you can add whatever you want, whether you want to add chicken to it, lamb, whatever meat, vegetables. If you want to make a vegetarian dish, you can do that. You've seen everything I've used in this is pretty much been raw ingredients and it's this all blend together. And you can see how it's even changed in color, texture and everything. And the smell, it smells absolutely amazing. Can't wait to eat this. But now that you've got this base prepared, it's literally just a case of adding in the chicken. Well, once I add in the lamb chops and I separate it, 
and just let it cook. I usually put it on a really low heat and let it cook for a good 45 minutes to an hour. Let it get nice and soft. It's just how I like it. You might want to cook it differently. But this base you can pretty much use for anything. And the key ingredients for a base that I use is onions, chili, garlic, ginger. After that, you can freestyle. You can add whatever spices, whatever blends you want in. It will just change the flavor uh, depending on what you add in. But those are the key ingredients for me that I use to make my bases. Even the tomatoes. You can make it without tomatoes. It'll be a little bit more of a drier curry. But the way I like it, I like a little bit of sauce with it as well. So I know it looks quite dry in there at the moment. But once you add the meat in, it will release some water as well. So that will make nice gravy with it. So yeah, I'm just going to sort out the meat and everything and then I'll show you what I do next. Right, so I've separated a bit out in here. So nasty lamb chops I had pre-marinated last night in a bit of yogurt and some of that spice mix as well. So just transferred a little bit of the base over into there, but this is the main stuff now. So that's on a very low flame now. It's on a simmer. Just made sure everything's coated in the spice and now I will literally just pop the lid on Make sure that's on nicely, yep. And leave that. Keep checking on that and keep checking on that momentarily just to make sure, give it a stir, make sure everything's mixing, make sure nothing's sticking. Whilst that's doing, let's go into the sweet potatoes. So I'm going to be also making sweet potato wedges and very simple. You can season them however you want. I'll show you how I season them and I literally just chuck them in the air fryer for like half an hour, 35 minutes. And that's it. That's my sweet potatoes done for the week. So let me get that done and I'll show you. Right, sweet potato wedges ready to go in the air fryer. So I literally douse them in avocado oil. These are the spices that I use. So ground ginger, garlic granules, mixed herbs, crushed chilies, black pepper. Mix it all together. Chuck that straight in there. Hopefully none fall out. Yep, that's all good. And then I'll just chuck that on for 35 minutes on air crisp and let that do its thing. Right, next part. Eggs and avocados. So... I'm making scrambled eggs with six whole eggs. They're all in there. And again, I've just add a blend of spices. Hi, Jessica. She's starstruck. Ah, there you go. <laughs> um, six whole eggs. And again, it's just the same sort of seasoning and spices that I use for the sweet potato. So you can add whatever you want in it. I also added some turmeric and some crushed well the blended coriander and cumin seed powder as well so that's all in there that's blended up some cheddar cheese as well just to give it a little bit more texture and that's, well it's the turmeric that gives it a nice yellowy color the way i do my scrambled eggs is to make it a little bit more interesting i also get a pack of mixed peppers and spring onions chop them all up put them in this pot and this stays in the fridge so every day i basically take a couple of spoonfuls of that put that in the frying pan first let it shallow fry for a bit and then add in my eggs. So it just gives, makes it scrambled eggs less boring. And then I'll just add that with the avocados and that'll be another meal that I have later on in the, in the day. I'll show you how I make it. It's scrambled eggs, it's scrambled eggs. But yeah, I'll show you how it turns out at the end. So there we go. A bit of ghee in the pan. Chucked in the mixed peppers and spring onions. Let that fry a little bit, get a little bit brown. And then I'll just add in the eggs. Right, that's the eggs all done. And all I do, I've chopped up an avocado, pop it in here, and then once that's cooled down, I'll literally just put it over this. This will go in the fridge, and that'll be one meal that I'll have at some point tomorrow. But one last thing to show you guys, and then that will pretty much be the meal prep video coming to an end. Right, that's the eggs and avocado in one tub. So I know it's overflowing a bit, but once I squeeze it down, it's eggs, so that will compress down. Pop that to one side. Now this is the final meal prep that I wanted to show you guys. Well, that's a lie. Second to last. I've got a bonus one for you and I'll do that in the evening. Some mixed leaves salad. Got some green olives in there. Some black olives. My mum's made some homemade kimchi. So a bit of that in there. Gherkin, beetroot. Not avocado oil. That was for the sweet potato. Feta cheese and tuna now the tuna that i use is these ones from aldi uh, let me just tip it over this way it says fusions tuna so they come with well they're flavored so this is jalapeno they do a few others as well they do a few other flavored tunas chili and garlic so these are the two main ones that i use i'm sure you know by now i like my chili and garlic 
So jalapenos, chili, garlic, that's the sort of flavoring that I tend to go for. Obviously, plain tuna would be better because it's got less um, additives or stuff in it. But I used to have tuna and then I used to put salad dressing in my salad because I don't like bland food. But at least this way, I'm not having to put salad dressing in my salad anymore. I'm getting the flavors, all different flavors from other bits that I'm putting in and obviously a little bit from the flavored tuna. That's my sort of vice, I guess. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could cut out everything, but we've got to be realistic as well. Um, it's not realistic to cut everything out because then you're just going to be eating plain bland food all the time. And that's not fun. And that's, I find that's how a lot of people relapse because if the food tastes good, then you don't need to eat junk food because a lot of the time junk food, I feel, well, not I feel, I think it's known. Junk food tastes good because they want you to keep buying it and keep eating it because it's a money-making thing. But you can make anything taste good. And if you eat healthy food, which tastes good, you're going to continue to eat healthy food and you're going to have a better diet, a better lifestyle overall. So yeah, sorry, I'm just waffling on, but that's the last bit that I've done there. That's done. Sweet potatoes are all done. Skin on as well. I always keep the skin on. I don't peel them because a lot of the times I find that the skin contains a lot of nutrients. So even like chicken, I used to have chicken breasts, but now I'm starting eating chicken thighs, drumsticks, wings with the skin on because the skin, although it's got the fat in it, the fat is actually utilized more as energy than carbs. And obviously it's got a lot more nutrients in it as well. So the chicken, that's all pretty much done. I've just added a bit of coriander for garnish and my mum's made some homemade garam masala. You can obviously buy a garam masala ready-made or already, um, which might be easier for some people, but my mum makes a lot of these spices at home. You can see, well, that's my spice drawer there. It's one drawer there. And then obviously down here, I've got even more. So, yeah. Chicken's done. This is my dinner for tonight. Lamb chops are all done as well. It's only the second time I've made lamb chops, so I'm hoping it turns out okay. It smells good, so I'm hoping it tastes good as well. That is pretty much everything I think I wanted to show you guys about what I eat on a daily basis. Like I said, I've got a little bonus meal, a bonus dessert that I'm going to show at the end of the day, and then we'll wrap it up and call it a day. Another thing I just wanted to touch on is the times that I eat and my frequency of eating. So I tend to start eating around half 12, one-ish. So I don't have breakfast. I just have a coffee in the morning and then I don't eat until lunchtime pretty much. So I have that with some sweet potato wedges at around half 12, one-ish. And then maybe about three hours later, I'll have either the eggs and avocado or the tuna salad, one or the other. And then another three or four hours later, I'll have the other one. And that is pretty much it for whilst I'm out and about. Then when I get home, I will have a protein shake and go to the gym. And then when I get back, I used to eat a big bowl of cereal with protein shake um, poured into it, but I've stopped that. And this is the bonus thing that I'm going to show you later on tonight. I, it's basically a Greek yogurt dessert. And I've found that it just helps me in the morning a lot more better with my digestion. So I used to wake up feeling really like bloated and stuff after having cereal at night. And since I've cut the cereal out and I've moved on to Greek yogurt type dessert, I feel a lot more better in the morning. I feel a lot more lighter. I don't feel bloated. And I also don't feel hungry afterwards because even after eating cereal, I used to feel that I still needed something more. It, like It wasn't enough. And I think that's because of obviously my body converting the carbs into sugar and insulin levels spiking and stuff and then me craving more and more food. But now where I'm trying to manage my carbs intake and replace it more with fats it's helping keeping me more satiated so I don't feel as hungry I don't get the hunger cravings and I'm not actually craving sugary stuff as much as I used to like I've got a bad sweet tooth I used to love having desserts you know cakes biscuits chocolate stuff like that but since I've changing my lifestyle out my diet and everything I've noticed massively my sugar cravings have died out a lot so it's working for me whether it works for other people I don't know but 
at the end of the day, if you cut out processed food and sugary stuff, then it's only going to be beneficial for you. It's not going to do you any harm by eating real um, single ingredient foods. But you've got to do it in a way that it works for you. You can't be that strict all the time. You've got to have a bit of leeway. Otherwise, well, you relapse and it's also may not be sustainable. So this is just an example of what I eat and what I make on a weekly basis. So take from it what you find beneficial to you. Uh, I'm not saying you've got to copy it like for like. Like I said, I'm not a qualified nutritionist or anything like that. This is just what I like to eat. And it might help some of you out doing meal prep whilst you're on the road. And it might just give you a little bit of a change in your diet and lifestyle and you might feel better. So hope you have found this video useful. I know it's not what you normally expect from me. It's not boiler breakdowns and stuff. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Right, change of clothes because I've just got back from the gym and this is what I'm going to show you, which is my post-gym meal. I did make it the other day, but it got late, so I didn't bother filming it, so just doing it today. Greek yogurt, full-fat Greek yogurt, 10% fat on there. In here, I've put a bit of protein powder in there, a big spoon of peanut butter. The peanut butter that you want to use is, this is the one I use, it is Meridian. So, well, it's not just peanut butter. I've got all different nut butters, almond butter, peanut butter. Well, at the moment, I've only got almond and peanut left, but these are just 100% nuts. Obviously, if you're allergic to nuts, then you can't. But if you're not allergic to nuts, don't get Sunpat or some of those other brands which have got palm oil and other and sugar in it. Get something which is 100% nuts, depending on what nut, you, not, what nut butter you like. So... There's peanut butter in there, protein powder, Greek yogurt, mixed berries. So I've got blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, chia seeds, pine nuts. I normally get a bag of mixed seeds from Aldi as well, but I've run out. So yeah, I'm just freestyling. Milled flax seeds as well. What else? Cinnamon. I think that's it. I think that's everything. So yeah, so that is now my post-gym pre-bed dessert meal, whatever. So if something, even if I go gym in the day, I will have this now every night before I go to bed and I've found not to sound crude but I feel less bloated in the morning where I used to have a big bowl of cereal before and you know what I mean when I'm talking about it, I don't feel so bloated in the morning my stomach feels nice and light and yeah I'm not neat I'm not like feeling like you know how it is in the morning so yeah that's my final meal of the day so I'm gonna have that now and then probably just chill out for a bit and then hit the bed so yeah Hope you've found this video useful, interesting. I hope it helps you. Like I said, this is just an example of what I do. I'm not preaching to anyone, but I just thought it might help some people out if you're, you know, on the move a lot and you're struggling to eat properly or, you know. And remember, this is not a diet. I'm not saying this is a diet because the reason why I don't like to call it a diet is because a diet has a start and an end. This is, for me, it's a lifestyle choice. It's a lifestyle change. So that means it's something which I'm not, I don't see, okay, once I've lost X amount of weight or put on X amount of size or whatever, then I'll revert back to no. This is a lifestyle change for me. So it's something which I want to see the benefits of it and I want to continue it going forward as well. So I hope you take something from it and I hope you find it useful, interesting. Drop a comment below, any questions, queries, I'll answer whatever I can.